but educational practice mirrors social conditions more in the process sense. So the Victoria <coughs> School Room is a classic example, rows of rows of desks, teacher at the front, then the clerks in the factory, rows of clerks, supervisor at the front, and the equivalent on the shop floor. So what's happening with virtual um, uh, <coughs> virtual work, virtual leadership? At the moment, I think it's it's just sort of leadership as we've known it by, by another medium. But the you probably named Shazana Zubov at Harvard wrote a book called In the Age of the Smart Machine. Said at first, when we get IT, we automate, you know, put the payroll, etc., on the computer. But later on, we informate, we saturate organisations with it. And I think at the moment, we're um, uh, just doing traditional leadership, but through another medium. But quite soon, somebody's going to find a new form of leadership that fits them. And, you know, for you, there's kind of money to be made for consultants, whoever gets there first or stops it first. Uh, <coughs> a virtuous leadership is, is to play on words there. Well, this is the kind of Enron, etc., avoiding the corporate scandals. <coughs> Some of which, you know, deliberately or by accident are about ignoring the analytics. Uh, the Royal Bank of Scotland, or I think Enron. And what's the school bus in there or something? I can't remember the details of it. I think it was. <coughs> But I mean, also, it's kind of like a moral conscience, as well as the instrumental stuff, uh, I think. And ephemeralized leadership. Ephemeralization comes from something called Buckminster Fuller. Anybody heard of him? He invented the geodesic dome, that little triangles of glass or plywood. That's the most efficient way of containing the space. And he also points out we still build our houses basically by piling up stones and putting branches across the top. My house is like that. This building is kind of like that, except it's got tin on top, up the side. Um, and it's, but it's doing more with less. So when I was young, a radio was this big and it had a car battery type thing there and a little battery on the other side. And it was fairly creaky. But now you can get a radio that's no bigger than my watch. It's much smaller, better, much more efficient, blah, blah, blah. So that's a ephemeralization. And obviously in these times of uh, the desire for leaders and the like, that so a big sell out of that market. Um, and uh, <coughs> Mary Parker Follett is being rediscovered these days. Uh, the writer on leadership books about the law of the situation, which says if you're aware of it and sensitive to it enough, the situation will tell you what to do. It's a bit like philosophical pragmatism in the uh, American sense, Dewey, Saunders and Pierce, for which Dewey is the interesting one because he was the educational philosopher stroke psychologist who called the tributes to the basic idea of experiential learning in the cycle. I know you can't be critical of. <coughs> but, and this relates to learning organisation stuff. So learning organisation, at least in my view, is not anti-hierarchy, which a lot of people think it is. But what it says is the people at the top need to listen to the data coming up <coughs> as much as telling people what to do and then use their sort of helicopter view to see the big picture and suggest what, what people do. The trouble is it doesn't work like that. I remember my wife Judy was working with BBC with Sally and others and, and Joe. I think there was a little focus group on what's wrong in the BBC at the bottom. It was a quite serious problem, bullying and the like, you know, came up. But it went, it was edited up the system and kind of uh, cleansed. So when it got to the, to the, what is it, control of the board, as they're called, yeah. some very yeah. general of this gang, Mark Thompson, he's still there, just about. Uh, um, it was, oh, everything's pretty fine, chaps. There's a few, few problems with the canteen, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the chips are overcooked or something. <laughs> so if, 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 if senior leaders are getting distorted information, they can't they take an intelligent view about what's going on, they give sensible direction. So uh, that all comes from uh, uh, Mary Park and Follett, like so. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, sorry, I've thought of this. So human relations back to scientific management. Um, I'm sorry, it's just going to the same ones. Uh, <coughs> you, some of you will know that um, Lancaster's take note of the Work Foundation used to be Industrial Society, posh place in London, Westminster. Will Hutton, up to recently, has been the boss.